I welcome everybody. This is our uh, second forum uh, regarding the transfer station. If you were here for the first one, I apologize. You're going to be bored senseless because we're just going to be going through the same slides we went through before. Uh, we were hoping on a um, different group of people coming in uh, to get a better feel for uh, why we're looking at the transfer station and what steps we feel might be needed to um, correct some issues we see. Um, just want to say again with me here, we have um, Jan Amin to my far right, is the Executive Director of Franklin County uh, Solid Waste Management. Appreciate yes. you being here. Absolutely. <laughs> From the select board, Erica, Phil, our chair, I'm Chris Waldo. We have Veronique and Adam as well, and Troy representing the transfer station. <laughs> You're the only one who showed up. No, no. Uh, so I was told to kind of, uh, based on your direction, to kind of open this meeting to discuss um, the, the main reasons why we're bringing this up in the first place is uh, our town is not immune to um, inflation like every other town, every other business, every other person. Costs are going up. Um, so, just skipping the first part. Of it, this, uh, Z, I gotta tell you, it's gonna be the same exact thing as last time, aside from the last page. So just bear with me. <laughs> so, uh, right here, we're showing the uh, previous price for trash per ton, and forecasted price based on um, uh, contracts. Uh, for the future coming up here. Um, previously, we were going through um, CEP, the Community Eco Power, uh, at 86.75 per ton. Uh, they they went bankrupt and were replaced by Republic Services in uh, this year, uh, and the price went up to 99 dollars a ton, which added 5,000 to our disposable budget for next year anticipating 102 a ton and 20, 25, 106 dollars a ton, which is just over 22% higher than our rate in 2022. Uh, now our town is an outlier from all other towns in our county and surrounding. Uh, usually when you're an outlier, it means one of two things, either you're doing something extremely right nobody has figured out yet, or you're doing something wrong. Um, as you can see here, uh, th this is just showing some surrounding towns, how many permits they hold, uh, and how many total tons they usually uh, they have in a year, based on uh, fiscal year 2022. And based on those numbers, the pounds per user. As you can see here, Conway has a much higher pound per user number than anyone in Deerfield, Lever, or Orange. And like I said in the last meeting, I do not think that people of Conway are disposing more than these other towns. If anything, I would think it would be the reverse, the opposite of that. Do you know what the numbers for Ashfield are? Uh, we do have the numbers for Ashfield on my computer. Um, I can get them to you after this. If you, I have a whole chart of every. Hey, hey, Chris, every is town. pounds per user the same as pounds per permit? It is, pounds per permit. Okay. Yes. So, you are correct. So, it wouldn't technically be user if you have more than one person in a household using that permit. All right, this is a color chart based on the pounds per household per year. Um, as most color charts are, the lighter the color, the better, darker color and red, not so great. The next slide is a uh, zoom in of Conway. As you can see, Conway and Chesterfield aren't doing so great as compared to other surrounding towns. Um, again, Chris, is the basis for this the number of permits? This is all permits. So this is not total. No, this, no, this is this is trash tonnage. Yeah. This is trash tonnage divided based, by based number of households per, in Conway. Permits. By per, permits. Wait, but divided by permit. Right. Okay, but, which is but, different than presumably the number of households, which like. But, 
show. Yeah, right. the number would actually be worse if we did it by households because there are we estimate 700 okay. households and a thousand permits. So mm -hmm. you'd be dividing by 700 instead of a thousand. Mm -hmm. So, so you'd have even worse. You'd have even more trash per household. Why didn't you present but, it that way? Well, um, this this is. Um, well, we don't know how many households. So there's 700 households, but we don't know how many households actually have a permit yet. We know that there because per, because um, households can have more than one permit. So clearly, if every household had two permits, you'd have four. Can we define a permit? A permit when I apply on the app on the website, I can get up to four stickers, right? So is that I don't, I don't, website I, application I don't know one stuff. permit? Or is each sticker a permit? Each sticker is a permit. Each sticker is a permit. Right. Oh. Yeah. So okay. Well, we have two stickers, right? Yes. Yeah. So my my household has two, two as well. Right. So it's not unusual for the town to have right. more permits than it has households. Absolutely. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. It's, I have to point something out. Just looking at this and up here. Um, it looks like your previous slide, you sort of picked and chose which towns to put on there. Oh, sorry, one more prior to that. So we've got Deerfield, Lever, and Orange. And if you go back two slides, <coughs> or two slides, sorry. Um, you can see Ashfield has less than us. Deerfield, or sorry, Ashfield has more than us. Like basically you kind of picked all the green ones there and not the yellow ones, which I think is interesting, an interesting choice rather than just pick, picking the folks that were touching us. So I, I think I think actually Ashfield. You'd have to go back. Go yeah, back one. Less. Ashfield is less. Yeah, it's a lighter color. Yeah. So Ashfield is this color, and Conway is this color. So Ashfield is okay. three hundred pounds, or three hundred uh, pounds per household less. Yeah. So let me just explain. This is confusing. D this is a DEP chart. I have to. Um, I have to provide data for all of the Franklin County towns. So Ashfield is in Franklin County, but it belongs to a different solid waste district, so I don't have their tonnage. Um, Chris does, but that's part of why the next slide shows the, the district towns. So we have to report based on permits, but DEP interprets permits as households. So, so just to be clear, so we can see apples to apples, every, every color if that's being represented is based on permits. Some towns don't sell permits, but they know how many households are using their trend, you know, they, they kind of guesstimate um, how many, or they know how many households are using theirs. Um, so, and, and just so you're aware. Um, and we have more comparisons. Yeah, yeah. The, the select board did just vote to change the way we are going to be giving out the permits. And we're going to be tracking um, every every permit sticker is going to have the license plate number on it. It's going to be tied to the registration. And I will be able in a spreadsheet to figure out how many permits are in the household. And therefore, we'll have better numbers after this season. So that's a decision that's been made already? Mm -hmm. okay. And that was, again, part of that was the recommendation of our auditors that we shouldn't be taking any cash at the transfer station because we, there's no like secure mechanism. I mean, that was just kind of like, if we're not going to take cash to the transfer station, we have to have another mechanism to to record that and keep track of it. Right, just to be clear, we're still taking trash for some things. It's just the stickers will all be done through the town office. And I can, I can give you that um, Excel graph I have, because I do have everything on there. It's just because of the PowerPoint, the size of it. Yeah. I, I, really down a little am, bit. I just like I'm trying to get a picture. I mean, I know I already went to the, this meeting once. I didn't realize this was kind of a duplicate. Mm -hmm. But I, the way that it's presented is, and I don't think it's helping your argument. Honestly, there's like very clear ways that I can pick it apart, and um, I want to know that they're, the, your your decisions are solid. So that's why I'm picking it apart, right? If you can answer my questions, and I can see it from your perspective, then. It's, so you know, your your main question is based on. I'm I'm just trying to understand the picture as clearly as possible, and I and, and the reason I'm asking questions is because I there's a few things that I think that aren't laid out. Like like I said, it looks like that previous slide was the towns that were chosen on it were chosen because they had significantly lower tons per uh, pounds per permit than we did, 
Uh, I think we chose them based on the number of permits that were like, close to contract. Oh, so that it's similar. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, sense. isn't your argument it's about to be that all the towns around us have paid it through and ours is significantly higher? The argument is, is we're dumping a bunch of our tax money into the transfer station. And we're doing, we're, the way we're managing the payment of the transfer station is completely different from every other town. Yeah. The town started to do a pay-as-you-throw system. It, it has been shown in every other town that it has reduced the waste consumption for each town, mm -hmm. lowering the cost, and you know, making people more aware mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be disposing as much trash as you're disposing. You need to recycle more or not have as much consumables. So that's the argument, <coughs> is that we're trying to produce less, less waste so the cost is less as well. But isn't part of the argument that you, you've got more permits than you have households? That is one and that, that, that is one part of the argument where we we were basically saying because of the system that we have and how it's an outlier from every other town, that the assumption is that there's people that are taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Right. But we haven't done an audit to confirm that. Correct. I mean, so, I so I mean, there's an assumption there's here that there will be applications problem. online. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, the question is, are there people from out of town that are submitting applications and getting stickers or getting permits, right? And then the other thing is, are there people in town that are submitting multiple applications and getting more than four permits? Let's say you have a contractor friend who lives in Ashfield. And no, I understand what you're saying, Chris. Yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that, that even. A lot of this, I'm not sure that the solutions you're proposing are if you still do an online payment system that doesn't have checks and balances for, for residents. There is. Well, you, have to, you have to show your um, registration. I, I, can, I can, if you want, I yeah. can lay out. Because I just don't want to, yeah. like, if yeah. there's a problem in the registration process, I Absolutely. don't want that to trickle down Absolutely. to the, the solution and to not solve for that. And to, but to answer your question, are we aware of any others from out of town that have gotten like we do, do know that there was a hand that that our online registration system, even though it had, you know, Conway residents only. Uh, I know when I was the one day that I volunteered at the transfer station um, for for my shift, there was somebody that came to pick up their sticker that had filled it out, filled out their online application saying they were from Buckland, mm -hmm. and they were, but that. that the software didn't flag that. Right. That was just the one that I saw, and 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 it's it's not. Once they've been, yeah, w once they, they they tell the truth and they are still issued a sticker. Um, it was. <laughs> it's easier to it, it's, a sticker than a refund. There, there's right? all kinds of police powers issues, and and it's how much. It's not. A, it's not really. The, it shouldn't be the job of the transfer station employees. I agree. To, to, I agree. To do all these things. Yeah, totally. And and you know we're here because. We're trying to explain like the, our thinking, but like 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 what you had said, Z. Z, Z there, there's oh, I, I could pick this apart in a lot of different ways. I would encourage you to rephrase that or reframe that a little bit and to say that I, I have some suggestions that might be better and offer better solutions because we're not here trying to like sell anything or persuade anybody. This is just we're explaining how like we're trying that we have a problem and we're trying to solve this problem as best as we can. There might, there, there are people that are smarter than me, there are people that are smarter than all of us, and maybe they have better ideas. I'm off, I'm off for listening. So, but, um, what happened with policy, uh, every vehicle that comes through that gate is got to have a sticker. That's the yeah. same. May I, if it's okay, I'll just yeah. say what our new, that just got passed. So this is simply about how you purchase your permit stickers. So the first thing that everybody needs to know is that from now on, you can't purchase it without Proof of your vehicle registration. So that's what we requested when people come to the station to see their license and their registration. Right, right. So, it, um, so there's four ways you can do it. Um, one, you can come into the town offices while they're open, and all four of us in there are going to have the permits, and we're going to look at your registration, and we're going to put the license plate number on the permit itself and then hand that to the person. I'm going to keep, we're all going to have a, a spreadsheet that we share where we can put in everybody's information. So we'll know by street list, by household, who has which permits, right? So we'll know like there's four at this house and two at this house. 
So you can come into the office, you can purchase it online, but then you're still gonna have to come to the town offices to pick it up because we still have to see the registration. So that loophole will be gone. You, if you can't make it during office hours, we have a drop box on the front now, so we're asking people just put in a copy of your vehicle registration and an envelope with your address on it. We will mail back the registration with the sticker, mm -hmm. and then um, if you can't even get to the drop box, you can mail it to us with the envelope and your registration, and we'll mail it back to you. So those are the mm -hmm. four options. But all of them will be controlled now by... And is there a limit to the number of permits per household? I don't think that there's a need for us to limit it. I mean, as long as it's somebody legitimate in town, if they want to buy five stickers, more power to it's more money for the town. <laughs> you got five cars and you use all five to go to the Oh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just asking the question. I, you know, I don't have an opinion we, we on it. Family so, that that's that, how it's got to be. Yes. Yeah. We had a family that moved us. out of town last year that had 14 children. But you're not going. Yeah, but you're not going to sell a sticker. You're not going to sell five stickers with the same plate. Number. That's right. No, they're all going to yeah. be unique, and right. the plate number. So they all have to be registered in Conway. Right. That's right. correct. Yeah. Right. Now, what about part-time residents? There are, there are some. So there will be exceptions, and we will deal with it. There's also going to be times where you know somebody's out of town, and they have somebody else who's taking their trash in their vehicle. I had to deal with that before. What we would do is come up with one-day passes, and they'd have to come in, and it'd be tied to their um, their permit number. And we'd give out like say three, and they could come, and then they'd have to come back and get more. What you know, there are there are ways to work around all of those things. The new residents whose registrations not yeah. showing so their address yet. People show up on Saturday, Sunday without a sticker. They can't. They're turned away. Well, How this isn't going into effect yet. Quite a bit. And are they like? People that you met, are they? I mean, I feel like it doesn't matter if we know them or not. They don't have a stick on a vehicle. Yeah, right. But so, yeah. So, um, part of the problem there is that um, the, the stickers, renewal of the stickers, falls at sort of an odd time, like in June. It just seemed to me, I just had it in my mind that it would be something you would do annually, whatever. So, I'm one of those people that showed up there without a sticker on my truck, and I didn't have any money on me. So, the guys let me in. And, and eventually, you know, it all worked out. But that's, that was part of the issue. And, and, but it's a problem. It's gotta be very uncomfortable for them to deal with somebody who shows up with rubbish, especially if they know the person lives in town, right? And they can't let them dump. And there's a line of 10 cars waiting to, to, to get I think that's in the job yeah. description to deal with, you know, the people on that level. So that's just a comment. Um, but the, I had a question. So you're saying that people can purchase the stickers online and, and pay for it online? Is that how that works? If they wish to, but they still yeah. have to come in. Well, could they not? And why do they need to come in to actually get the sticker? Because we have to see the registration, one way or the other. You can All mail right, it in or whatever. Could they not include a, a photo, copy, a photograph? You can do that with your phone? You yeah, know? and, and if, and if you come into the office, you can show us on the phone as long as it shows the information. No, but could that it. not be mailed in as, a, as part of the application? Well, that's what I said. That's one of the options. Yeah. You're, you're asking about online. Right. right. You can't attach with with our credit card system and our oh, online yeah. pay. You yeah. can't attach a photo to that. Yeah. Yeah. But you could you follow have up receipt. with an email to yeah. to Veronique with a picture on it. Yeah. Say, that's hey, true. I just paid for this online. Here's a picture yeah. of my registration. Okay, and then you would be able I to do that for back. Yeah, she's going to take you a week and a half, two weeks to get a sticker back. <laughs> There's going to be an adjustment period for sure. If you, if you just do this whole process, by the time you, you fill it out, send it into the mail. But if he does it before he does it home, send it back to he'll have it waiting for him. Yeah. Is the town absorbing the cost of if he the mailing? Mail? Mail? Okay. Yeah. Is there a way for this to be tied to excise tax? Because it's like every year I have to submit my excise tax. And I can't do that without a valid registration. So right there, you know. The, the, no, actually, we don't. And this is why I said we mail back the registration. That's protected information. We literally cannot hold on to that. Yeah. It, and excise is a whole different, separate section of right. our government, believe it or not. And so, not every yeah. vehicle that is getting an excise tax is going to have a sticker well, yeah, attached to it. Yeah, but I mean, you can request it at that time. No, so. no it, it's going to have to be done separately, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, if for a, a household that has multiple stickers, like we have two, you're going to track the tonnage then based on number of households, not oh, stickers. Yes, yes, yes. Because so after this year, be, okay. yes, correct. So, and that was one of the points they were making earlier is that if we have a thousand stickers, we know we have fewer households, so we're actually producing, you know, more trash 
per household than is showing up on here. Mm -hmm. So it's worse than the 831 or whatever pounds per household. Yeah, 830 know. something households so we actually have. People's in the market. Deerfield. Deerfield. It's always Deerfield. Oh, Deerfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that was what's going on because they just agreed upon it. Oh, right. That's funny that I've never seen it. So it will it we'll have the number of households right. that are actually using the transfer station after this season. Is there any carve out for businesses in town that are using the transfer? That's another discussion we'll be having. <laughs> yeah, that's still up for debate. Yeah. Good. I say there's not many there that are. actually that use it that don't have their own dumpster. Right. Yeah. And we got I, I feel like we've had a lot of really great suggestions about like people can waste in and I mean I just want to emphasize that like this is this is the like we know that we need to do something about our transfer station and fees and like I mean this is a really tough budget year like this is like like the budget this year is really really tough you know and this is one way where we're, we're like wow like we don't think we need to be spending this much on the transfer station but this is just kind of like the first of like like we're open to many suggestions you know there's we're not addressing like the bulky waste bin right now although we have a lot of ideas about that and a lot of really good suggestions from residents um, but this is, you know, we're, this is a problem that we know that we need to address, and that's why we're having these public forums to try to get the input and try to make the right decisions about how we, as a community, can reduce our waste and, you know, lower the cost for everyone who lives here. Can I, can I make a suggestion about timing of the renewals? Can it just be tied to some other mailing, like the census, the real estate bills, just do them at the same time? Well, no, because if, that would actually cost us more, because then if we have to like send it in, like, if it goes over the postage or whatever. So, um, I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I, I think it'll be easier to do it this way. And, and, and to follow up, with, to follow up what Erica said, it's it's also important to realize that, that we generate a lot of waste per, you know, trash per permit, trash per household, but that trash is not evenly distributed amongst our households. And we know that there are sections of our, dem demographic sections of our population, like seniors that live by themselves, that generate one bag of trash per month, maybe. Um, we know that there are a couple of dozen permit holders that generate lots of trash. Um, and so, it's, so when you think about how we do it now, which is uh, everything paid out of general the general fund, except for the ten thousand dollars that we receive from the, the sticker um, permit now, um, what we are doing is everybody else in town is subsidizing the highest, the, the the most wasteful of us right now, and so part of this, it, it, one one part of it is to try to make it that a little bit more equitable for everybody, um, and that uh, you know, so so that you know it. With, with and if, if anybody has any additional ideas besides the pay as you throw um, idea um, it, uh, as to how those that generate the most waste you know can can be made to pay the most for that like as opposed to everybody paying the same so that's that's kind of the dilemma that that that, that, that the, or the value system or the bias of the current system that kind of explains a lot of our choices and a lot of our thinking. Um, and how do you make it fair, and how do you make the bias go from the bias in the system go from supporting the most wasteful among us to um, everybody sort of paying a more equitable amount? Because so yes, it's basically a consumable tax, right? So, like Phil said, the more trash that's being that, that's at the transfer station that we have to ship to Springfield or wherever, the more it costs us. So. I know for, for my house in particular, maybe a kitchen bag every two weeks, mm -hmm. right? But if that was everybody, we wouldn't have these huge enormous costs. So, mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't feel right to me. Um, and this is great. This is why we want to have this forum, is for the open discussion, instead of looking at a bunch of boring PowerPoints with data on them. <laughs> But well, we could we could get to the solution that you guys are proposing. Well, again, you know, like Phil said, we're open to ideas, but the reason we keep pushing for pay as you throw is other towns have used it and it's worked. 
We should um, say modified. Modified. Yeah. modified. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is heavily modified. Heavily modified. Well, and if you go to page your throw, you'll have data, which you don't really have. Well, now, right? Not for this town, but for every, but all the other towns I mean, who've gone who've gone. Once you start tracking it by registration, then you'll have data, right? So do you want to skip to the yes. bag part so that they understand what modified is? <laughs> uh, to the I'm sorry. To, to or we could just have James. Yeah, I think I mean to be honest, for, for people who if people weren't here for the first presentation, it's probably worth Showing some of the some of some of the data, but okay. that's just my bias. That's my bias. Is um, there's some good information? Um, yeah. and and we can. Yeah, we'll get to the page, the yeah. modified page. I, I think it's just good to to the the Chris and the board did a lot of well, I'm gonna say a lot. They've spent a lot of time. They've been at several meetings talking about trash in the transfer station, and they really have looked at the big picture to see how Conway to get data. Um, empirical data to see how Conway compares to your neighboring communities. Um, and so that's why I'm just suggesting it's, it's worth a few minutes to go through some of this information. So people who work here for the first time or people who are watching it um, being recorded you know, on the video can see, just get, get the full picture. And then we can you know, deal with the good Yeah, so details. here's some very basic comparisons from our town to surrounding towns about um, you know, operating hours to show how often transfer stations open, the tax rate, the real estate tax rate, I should say, um, how much the permits are, if there are permits, uh, the disposal type, as you see, a lot are paid as you throw. Um, Williamsburg, is that unlimited or is that modified? That's unlimited. It is unlimited, okay. Um, the cost per bag, some towns uh, charge per bag, not they, they don't offer stickers. Some towns you buy actual bags in as well. And then the bulky waste pricing. Um, same sheet, just Conway at the top again here to show uh, the comparisons between Conway and the four towns below. And just a description of pay as you throw. Um, as I stated earlier, Conway is the only town in our county that doesn't have some type of form or form of pay as you throw. Uh, here uh, are just a couple examples of how towns who had recently uh, switched to pay as you throw systems, um, what happened in those towns. Uh, Roe, for instance, uh, instituted a uh, pay as you throw program with 52 uh, free trash stickers, so one a week. Um, and then charge for additional stickers. In their first year, they reduced their consumption by 31 tons, or about 25% year to year. Uh, Irving recently switched to a pay-as-you-throw program at the end of 2021. Uh, each household receives 104 stickers as opposed to 52 per row, uh, so two a week. Uh, households can request additional stickers. Um, shows you here the additional cost. Again, they reduced their consumption by 160 tons, or about 34%. So, so just to be clear, the difference is, I know we say pay as you throw, which makes everybody think we're going to be paying. So the modified part of this is what Roe um, had done, is giving away free stickers with your permit that would be tied to every permit hole. You know? And that's one of the reasons why we need to track two by household because we don't want to give, if this program were to you know, be put in place, we don't want to give um, 52 free to every permit holder because that might mean one household has four cars worth of, you know. So we have to know that it's going to a specific household for those. But, but I just want to make the point that they're, at, you know, the talk here is about giving them out for free. Okay. Okay. The, town yeah, has, has, the town has talked about 104. So we and 104, right. yeah. Okay, so that's, that's a proposal that's on the table, mm -hmm. 104 stickers yeah. per, not per permit, but per household. Per household, right. Per. So why would any household want more than one permit just to get more cars through? To, that's, uh, that's the only reason why? I think, I think the permits are kind of... Um, Kind of sidelining us here because it's really just the convenience of the homeowner if they want to spend more money for another permit sticker so they can take more than one vehicle to the okay. to yeah. the transfer station that's really all it is do yeah. the stickers roll over from year to year no they have to get so they expire 
Correct. The bag use it, So it's use it or lose oh. it? Oh, oh no. no. Are you talking about the bag or the permit? Well, the permit. no, I'm talking about the, the bags. The oh, stickers. No. The stickers. No. Oh, no, not the, not the windshield the decal. stickers. The bag stickers. Let's, let's call the one on the window the decal. Yeah, let's call yeah. it the decal. Yeah. yeah. So do those, if you don't use them all, do you get to keep using them the following year? I, I, we haven't actually. We haven't. But we. I, well, we haven't thought of that. Haven't that why, they haven't you? discussed it, but in other towns, yes. Okay. So, and well, I'm just thinking about Phil's example, I mean, where he's talking about you know the, the the elderly folks who are doing one bag a month. Well, you know, what are they going to do with 52 stickers right. or 104 so, stickers? Sell them. Get them to so, your so, 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 But they still need to buy the permit. Yeah, they can sell them. Right. Exactly. Except they're free. Not on eBay. What happens in other What happens in other communities is. You know, the, the idea of a modified patient growth system is that the town, there's a universe, you know, you're, you're, you know, the town is paying, the general fund is paying for this many, 700 households times 104 stickers, right? You know that's what we're paying for. It doesn't mean that you couldn't give, if you had 10 extra stickers, you couldn't give them, is it Zeke? Couldn't get, right? Or you couldn't give them to a neighbor or sell right? Or, yeah, you could theoretically sell them. In, in some towns, in my town, the town hall actually takes in excess stickers and then gives them to, to homes, particularly families who mm -hmm. have three kids in diapers, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. so for me, two bags a week would be, you know, I don't use all my stickers each year. I get 52 free stickers where I live. I don't use them, but I can give them to town hall and then somebody could come in and say, or someone who can't afford to buy extra stickers, they go through their first allotment and they, you mm -hmm. know, they just okay. can't financially yeah. choose to pay for trash bags. Yeah. So there's so so surplus stickers, you know, either can be used by you for future years if you have a big party and you suddenly need ten bags of trash, or you can give them back to the town to, to redistribute. But but the idea is then that the tax base is paying for. You know, you know how much trash the tax base is paying for. Everybody gets the same amount. Yeah, so it makes it seems it's really clear to communicate that the, the decal, the twenty dollars gets you the decal and access to the transfer station, right? And the stickers are just a way of you know measuring your your trash your disposal yeah use. Well, so that was my kind of wonder was if we go to a pay to throw system, then really what's the purpose of the decal and that fee? The you know you're a resident. Yeah. yeah, just know you're yeah. a resident. Yeah, know you're a resident. Yeah. So, if I, so if I get a sticker and I give it to someone in Deerfield because I'm not using it, like, why do we care? I'm just curious. They can't get into the transfer station well, to use no, it. But I'm, well, they I'm can. Saying. They can get into the transfer station. Because you can. just put their decal on yes. someone else's car. Oh, yeah. but, but they, they, they can't get into the transfer station. Now you have the yeah. yeah. transfer yeah. station yeah. workers to look at the little numbers on the thing and compare it to the plate on every car. And that, so that could really be Here's my, my, my answer is yeah. that it's a way for the town but to back. There, there's the, 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 the budget, and we're going to look at this later, but the town pays over $100,000 for the transfer station. So most towns try to, to put that on the users. And in Conway, I think most majority of households actually use the transfer station. But in some towns, like Deerfield, maybe 40%. So the, the decal, the $10 or $20, is a way to offset the general fund. It's, it's, it's a revenue source yeah. for the households who are choosing to use that service. Okay. So if you're not using that service, you don't pay to access the transportation. Even though you don't, you know, you do a lot of uh, the food. The recycling and compost. Yeah, compost, you do that. Yeah. And so you have to do So without the, the surrounding yeah. window, the I mean, person would know who you are when yeah. you stop and all other hands. Less than it's because Lynn, it's Lynn has some things. No, I was just saying that um, I certainly... I'm certainly supportive of switching to some new system. Many, many years ago, I worked in a town, not in Franklin County, that was just implementing a page of And we've all been primarily speaking about us as residents. The hell with the transfer station tenants because it is really, really hard mm -hmm. for them to look on yeah. each bag or garbage can or whatever it's going to come in. Right. And if you have the bags in a garbage can, then you're going to pull the bag out of the garbage can. So it, it ended up requiring additional staff 
just because of the flow that. of people coming so, through. So in, 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 as a brief answer to that, yeah. um, the, we, the select board, in, in, we did a field trip meeting and we had we conducted a select board meeting at the Charlemont transfer station um, <clears throat> where we witnessed the, the inoperable. And I, the, I thought that exact same thing. And when I saw how big the stickers were, um, and how legible they were from a, from a distance, um, it's so, so that as soon as somebody was getting them out of their car, from you know, you could just see the sticker the whole way. I, I thought you know that having big stickers made well, more sense discussed. than small right. stickers. Right. Uh, to have you discussed whether you will allow uh, garbage cans? Yeah. yeah. You won't be able to just dump a can no. over the rail because no, you'd have to have a bag, right? Yeah. 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 It doesn't. Well, it doesn't have to be. So I'll just speak. Yeah speak from what other towns have done or what I've helped other towns do. Um, most towns buy fluorescent stickers or brightly colored stickers and the requirement, not everybody does, but the requirement is that you, you know, tie your bag, however you tie the neck, you have a neck and you wrap it around the neck so the attendant doesn't have to look, you know, okay. underneath or on the side. It's just right around the neck and it's bright pink or it's fluorescent yellow. And we're trusting people, right, to, to, to do the right thing. Um, a lot of towns don't want, a lot of residents don't want to have to buy a plastic bag when this came up, I think, at the last mm -hmm. meeting. So what I've recommended to towns is people can use whatever they want. Mm -hmm. It's really by size and weight. So you want to use a, I use birdseed bags. I, I don't ever buy trash bags. I just use birdseed bags or sometimes people use feed bags or they want to use a leaf bag or you want to use pellet bags. You have pellets and you want to use pellet bags. It, it gets a little tricky for the transfer station attendant because we're trying to equalize what people are throwing out. So it's not, um, you can't put, you know, 50 pounds in a, in a pellet bag and try to put one sticker on it. We're really trying to say, what would a 33 gallon bag of trash hold? It's about 20 to 35 pounds. So that, that requires people to be, you know, somewhat um, honest about what, what they're use, what they're putting in their uh, trash bag, their birdseed bag. Um, the transfer stations don't want loose trash. It actually is a is a hazard, mm -hmm. um, and so most towns and and the solid waste district we discourage people from using just putting loose trash in, and that is hard for some people because they don't want to have to use a bag. Um, but but really we don't know what's in that trash and maybe you, your loose trash is perfectly fine it's just plastic debris that you can't recycle um, but for the worker at the transfer station they don't know if that had broken glass in it or it has needles in it or um, it, or it's slippery um, and so we really require that some sort of container um, when it goes in and we haven't made any actual decision about like whether you can have, like, a, whether we talk about, like, a contractor bag. Like, I, honestly, I'd probably be divorced if my husband, like, if we, like, I'd have to move out of town <laughs> if we were not going to take contractor bags anymore. But we talked about, like, if you're going to use a contractor bag, like, you know, two stickers, three stickers. stickers. Like, exactly. Right. So, I mean, that's, like, that's why this is a public hearing. Like, we haven't made that decision yet, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we're open to all of the possibilities. We just know that we're spending so much on trash, and we feel like it's disproportionate, like, like we feel like Conway citizens are spending money on like out of town trash. That's I think that's the real. Is this going to be presented at town meeting, or is this going to be a decision that the select board is going to take on um, and, and um, make a decision? <laughs> One among us was a strong proponent of that idea, but the select board voted repeatedly, and. The person that was a strong proponent of that idea failed to convince the rest of the select board to do that. I have to say I agree with the rest of the select board that this town meeting would go on for three days. Oh my God, we would be there for a Yeah, a public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know, and and, and yeah. as one who was a strong proponent against the other one. <laughs> Not, for no, but, but my understanding of, this is, like the transfer station comes under the purview of the select board of the, or previously it was the board of health, but I just personally feel strongly like taking the transfer station out of it, like to see the authority of democratically, I mean like town government, like I just don't want to take this decision to town meeting because I feel like it sets a precedent where like then maybe we 
then we would have to go to town meeting to decide how much we pay the transfer station attendance. Like, I just don't feel like that is a decision. I feel like it's definitely important to have as much feedback from the community as possible, but I don't feel like that's We want to have it like our, our government system now, corrupt. Well, no, we we want the public hearings, we want the public meetings, we want the information to get out there, but to vote on it and discuss it at town meeting is it, it's not a town meeting item. It's it's not that that's not a, a yeah. Just, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's like a. The, the way that it would have, it, it, you know, it, it, if it would have gone to town meeting, it would have had to be sort of a modified referendum-ish options up. And it up, would have been more of a non-binding opinion, right. Right. Question, and which is a waste of hours of discussion. And we would have decided to do whatever we wanted in mm -hmm. the end, you know? So that's why we, I mean, not whatever we want, but what we, like, you know, what feedback that we get from what you feel like, is best for the town. Right. right. <laughs> so. So, so let's, can we start talking about the specifics of how, like for example, are you going to use stickers or have you considered bags? Because I live in a town where they have colored bags that you had to use. I'm not sure. The stickers don't matter. I think the bags were a problem and they, yeah. because they right. stopped yeah, doing Yeah, I've heard sure a couple of towns that bags are an issue. Yeah. Greenville so, started with, with the name on the bag. Yeah. Then I went to just the and you're making bag. people purchase bags. Right. That's then why we went to modified pay as you throw. Like we don't want anyone to pay. We don't want any Conway residents to pay any. We don't want them to pay money. Like I pay, you know, ten dollars to go to the dump basically. Mm -hmm. So this shouldn't cost any more than what we're paying for a sticker. You should like get the allotted number of stickers, and then you know we'll see after i would suggest that we still allow contractors bags because there's yes. certain yeah, yeah, items that can yeah. only fit in contractors yeah. bags yeah. even though they might compress them and have it but two stickers i'm yeah. fine with two stickers. right yeah yeah, yeah but uh, yeah. so that's a suggestion <coughs> what are, are we thinking are you folks thinking of charging the same like ten dollars per household per there's the right. some of the, yeah. some of the screen yeah. I can't, yeah. unfortunately i'm yeah. sorry i can't yeah. see yeah. Well, this is just, yeah, this and is just the hundred for three bags. And what's that for a hundred for a hundred trash bag stickers? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't read that. Yeah, so what I have up here, it, it, you know, this isn't this hasn't been voted on, but um, for the decal, we double to twenty. You get two two stickers a week, um, a regular size kitchen size bag would be one sticker. Um, or a regular trash bag is one sticker. A contractor size bag would be two stickers. I put equivalent because um, I know we're talking about loose waste, but that was one big thing you brought up last time is that you come with like buckets, right? Yeah, I mean, that's my, my biggest. So I want to be clear. Uh, since the last meeting, I've actually come around quite a bit on the pay to throw, and I actually kind of think it's a good idea. What I'm stuck on is like just a couple of things. One of which is the bags, because like I, you know, you say, oh, we don't, you, we're not going to require people to buy bags. Well, if I have to throw my trash in a bag, I currently don't. That means I have to buy bags, right? And I know that you're suggesting that I call every person I know and ask for all their feedbacks and stuff, but like. I have one horse friend and zero other opportunities. <laughs> so like I'm gonna run out really fast. Right. Plus or like she's already using hers for that stuff. Um, so so I feel like so and, and then so I do have more questions about what you were saying about the bag. So you were saying like that the the the, the district doesn't want loose trash because and then you listed yeah. a bunch of safety concerns, but like. That's what we've been doing, like literally forever at the dump, and yeah. and there's no circumstance where folks like Troy should ever be coming into contact with my trash. I'm dumping it in the hopper, and then it's gone. Right, right, and it's not, and it's not. There's a couple of issues, and it's not the solid waste district. It's the disposal facility that it goes to. But there's another issue. If you were ever there when they pull, and these guys probably know, when they pull the compactor away, mm -hmm. everything at the end falls out. Mm -hmm. So if there's loose, if if there's happens to be loose trash at the end, mm -hmm. it falls out. Mm -hmm. And then, and then someone has to the dri the driver has to touch <laughs> the driver Five has to pick the driver pulls the box away.
puts the empty box in and then literally either shovels or picks up oh. all of the trash that's Sometimes. falling on the ground. I hate that. Sometimes. I'm putting it Sometimes. in the bag. Right. And, puts, and puts it. <laughs> so what I, what I was going to offer was a paperback, you know, yeah. like, yeah. like a paperback. Be creative. You can yeah. make, a, make I something, right? I don't think right? it's in the plastic um, recycling bins. So, 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 so Troy, what would you think if we had like a donation area for bag? Because I know my neighbor gets pellets every year, like loads and loads of pellets, and those bags are going nowhere, right? So, but maybe he could donate them to the transfer station so someone like Z could grab them. Wait, so but I say that he's trying to avoid plastic. He's trying to avoid any well, kind of in the world. Yeah, but if they're already in the world, yeah. Okay. 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 So, buy trash bags. But it's yeah. funny you say that because about three years ago, I was doing, I was working on the bag share project, and I had a 95 gallon toter that I bought at the transfer station, and people could put in their feed and seed bags, and I would make bags out of them. I had to stop it because people were not emptying them mm -hmm. and leaving trash in them, mm -hmm. and I had stored them in my house, and I got. Critters, so I stopped it. Mm -hmm. But, but I thought about that as soon as you were saying that. It's like, well, we could still put up a couple of toters there, and people could put them. And if they've already got trash in it, what difference does it make if you're just coming and, and dumping, our grabbing them to put trash in? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's something we could certainly try. You said the fact that you got maggots in some of the bags, and the bags haven't been cleaned out, and you got crap in the bags. I didn't have any maggots in them. It was just that they left it's the July and August every yeah, time. Yeah, it depends on what time of year it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did it during the summer. But anyway, yeah, I mean, so there's, there's yeah. it's at least something we could look into okay. for people who really want it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the goal so. is, is to not, not have right. people have to go buy, people who never oh, buy heavier yeah. black bags. Right. We, we, the goal really is not, you know, food pulled out of the dumpsters now from from raccoons and, and animals. Yeah. We spend ten minutes in the morning cleaning that up until we get into the dumpsters and yeah. pull it out and eat. Yeah. So that's that's always a so, thing that we got to watch for. Right. So for Nelson, everyone else who might have trouble seeing this up here, um, <laughs> again, uh, <laughs> sorry, call me out there. No. <laughs> uh, like I said, contractor bags would be more. Nelson and Jim. And Jim. Yeah, yeah. You can't see that, Jim. Uh, contractor bags are larger, obviously. It would be two stickers. Um, bulky waste would be determined per item, like all the other towns. We're already having to pay for mattresses and tires. Um, I know this was some contentious uh, contention at the last meeting, too, because people made the assumption if we start charging for things like sofas, that we're going to start seeing them on the side of the road. Um, there's going to be bad apples everywhere. I don't think that should discourage us from um, fixing a, a problem we have here. Uh, and it, was, it was funny about after that last meeting that we had, mm -hmm. there was an illegal dumping that was done on Route 116 on Asheville and uh, the next town over. Asheville and Buckley? Asheville and Buckley. Oh, really? The rest yeah. area. And it doesn't get picked up by the state because it's a federal highway. So you, you would have no notice of it, being, of it being dumped. But there was half a house full of furniture that somebody just threw out in the, in the rest area. Yeah, Ron told me he had to pick something up the other day because the somebody came to the transfer station and it was closed and just left it on the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought, I thought, like, you're always going to have like the outliers, like yes. people who are going to dump a mattress at the side of the road. Like, yeah. They were going to do that anyway. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's what I, from the data that Jan has shown me over the past, you know, six months that we've been investigating this, like, that hasn't been the case from towns that have gone to pay for it. Like, mm -hmm. everyone who thought, like, oh my god, now there's going to be, like, dumpster fires at the side of the road, like, that actually hasn't been the case. So, I feel like, you know, we're in a good position being one of the last towns in the county. Right. To move the paper Years ago, we used to have problems in the state forest. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. People would just go up there with uh, construction stuff and just dump it. When it was like a dollar, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> just so pay a dollar to go over there. The other thing I wanted to mention is we did have a change recently with our mattresses, and we don't take them anymore. And at least I have not heard of any mattress dumping here because of that change. You had that one mattress. Yeah. Well, it got walked in. Yeah, somebody physically yeah. walked it by the gate all the way. But that's not dumping in the woods. <laughs> what I'm saying is that... No, they were nice enough to put it in the dumpster. Exactly. They just didn't want to leave it. They walked it around. That is something that people do because you can walk around the gate. Right. People actually, when the dump is closed, will walk around the gate and bring their trash. Yeah. In. There, there might be some... Right? There yeah. might be people that have to realize that for an hour. 
And yeah, yeah. But my, my point is, <laughs> that's always kind of, like there will always be the outliers. But I feel like you know, for the for, for the most part, people but, aren't going to be. I, we hope not. We had somebody, we had somebody leave stuff at the mall, outside the mall. Yeah. Okay. You know, what was the stuff that they put in the bulk of the coffee stuff and the stuff is about now? But my, my point is that's almost like a trial run in a way for us because yeah. we had a change with the bulky item and to the best of my knowledge we didn't have any trash showing up anywhere mattresses because we changed the system. So that was that was around the same, around the same time so that far. eventually you leave the company. Which is not to say it never will, but so far no. Great, so far, yeah. yeah. Well did people feel entitled? To be clear, you, you keep saying none, and Troy is telling you at least one. That was walked into the, I'm talking no, no, about, I mean, no, the, the one, one that was on Route 116, yeah. that, was, that wasn't registered by the state because it was picked up by the, uh, not the, the town. town, it was picked up by the state. That was the whole house load, right? That yeah. was quite a yeah, but that's so that Yeah, right, but that's not because of a change in our policy. I was just trying to make the point that we changed the policy on mattresses, Right. and to the best of my knowledge, we have not had a problem with mattresses. It was, it was right after we had that last big meeting when we were all here. The one that about. got snuck in. So, so let's talk about another thing that happened recently at the transfer station. Construction debris. Uh, that is one thing that I, in particular, do not want to sway on. I don't think construction debris should come into our transfer station at all. Okay, now we're, we're going to have a discussion about that because we, we just had a discussion with someone else and we were basically told that we because we're a smaller transfer station, we do not fall on the same guidelines as, as the bigger. This is pretty much how you described it to me. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you have to take it. So, no, but so, a small so, household, like I have an 8 by 10 bathroom that I replaced the tiles, so here I have a box worth of tiles. Right. That, that's not, I don't make those decisions. All, all I was explaining to you, Troy, is that they can go, the only things, the only thing that can't be, go in the trash or the bulky are the, like electronics, so monitors, um, uh, what else, tires, freon containing appliances, so tile, ba that. bathroom tiles, construction debris, um, sheetrock technically is banned, but the exemption, there's an exemption for things that can't, for, for small transfer stations, so, so there are things that can go in the bulky waste, but I think the conversation and the discussion that the select board is having and needs to have is do you is there some limit because you had somebody come in with an entire bathroom deconstruction project and I don't know where that picture is of the um, bulky, no, bulky well, waste box so the question is if you can't if there's no way to limit so this was a bulky waste box um, from January and for those of you who may be able to see the picture it's got a mattress in it um, but it's full of what? It's full of construction debris. And that mattress, that, that mattress was heavily urinated on. Right. So, yeah. so that, years old. Yeah, so a lot of that, a lot of that from from the West Coast. Yeah, I took it in. But, but the point of this picture oh, is some contractor or somebody a did a pretty big job and put filled your yeah. box with That's construction debris. So what I'm going to bring up again is for free. If, 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 if we can't do something about this, then the state force is going to get full of that again. Because people are just going to do it. Well, so I think the question, and this is, again, this is not, the solid waste district has nothing to do with what goes in that container. The question is, does the, right now there's no fee, there's no charge, right. right? So any contractor can come in, if they have a decal, and fill that box. Or they can put roofing shingles in there. Or and that, that, was, that was basically the question, is I had a woman call me and said that she had a bathroom where she had all this ceramic tile. And over last weekend, somebody had snuck in a whole crop load of asphalt shingles, and it was all in a blue tarp, and it had to have taken at least two to three people to manhandle it into that dumpster. Mm -hmm. And I had said that I had to check with this, this woman to make sure that it would be okay to take all of this ceramic tiling. Right. And that's where we had said, yeah, yeah. I had mentioned that, I don't know if it's a contractor doing it, if it's the homeowner doing it, right. if it's certainly the contractor, then the right. answer should be no. If it's right. a homeowner, what do I tell them? Mm -hmm. And you yeah. were basically saying, well, you know, if it we're a small transfer station, it's, it's a resident, so yeah. No, no, that's not what I said. I said, I said they're not. I said there's no ban on tiles going into. And we shouldn't have the signs see on but the wall the signs saying say, no, none of this the stuff. Signs, it's, signs don't say ceramics. So, but I'm not going to argue with you, Troy. The point. I think that's on right here uh, on the table is how do you control this? 
can you control it? Because people are, people are misusing your free dumpster. And whether they're Conway residents or somebody from contract from Deerfield who knows somebody in Conway and they bring it in for free, you're paying. You have to go back to the beginning. Yeah. Um, I think it was in the beginning where, you, where we compare how you, Conway generates more bulky waste than the town of Deerfield. So they had 1,300 permits. You have 1,000 permits and you're, you're putting in something like 10 tons more. And I gotta tell you, we just so, built a house in Conway and our contractor took all the waste, contractor took all the construction waste away and we paid for that. So I don't know why other people And, right. and that's, that's one of the things. So small local. So, local yeah, but that's what happens if you, you have a contractor. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but look at these numbers. It's uh, what, 20, 25 tons more. You did 25 tons more of bulky waste than the town of Deerfield that has- uh, 35, no, sorry. Thir I can't, I can't add. Three hundred more. So, so we don't need to solve it tonight. We're not yeah. gonna solve it tonight. The, yeah. the point I think that, that is being brought before you is that there's abuse, there, the system is being abused and misused. Yeah. Yeah. And whether it's saying, mostly it's construction debris. Um, the question is, does a town say no construction debris, which the Board of Health did many years ago and then it kind of came back, or do they start charging for construction debris? Um, and do you start charging for I items that are going in there to offset the cost? Um, uh, Chris had put up a slide in the beginning about trash at $102 a ton, bulky waste is $115 a ton, um, soon to go up to $120 a ton. So that, the, the bulky waste actually costs more to get rid of than your trash. And so that's just a place to look at. So what's wrong with saying no construction? What's wrong with saying no Because they so, in at night so, when they deliver their shingles. So if I'm just like pulling some sheet rock out of my bathroom and I'm just like, re like if I have a, you know, I live in town and I have a tiny little bathroom that I'm redoing myself. Yeah. I install cameras. <laughs> We're well, actually, no, we actually I want to throw that away. Take we'll pictures of license container. plates. I have their yeah. Well, we can, well we, you can't because they're walking in. But, but it's really but, but this so is an issue. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go on a limb here. I, I do my own housework. Yeah. And occasionally I tear out some drywall. What do I do with it? You should pay to so, dispose of it. Well, okay, where? Can you put it, so you wait, put it where, in the contractor's bag and throw it in the trash? <laughs> <laughs> I have one sheet of drywall. Where do I pay to dispose of it? Put it in the contractor bag and break it up. Mm -hmm. Is that allowed? Yeah, yeah, we said that. Yeah. 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 It's okay to take a small amount of sheep out. Yeah, but it keeps going back and forth. This is not. Well, that's just it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going there. back and forth from one part, that's one company to another from the, from the town, yeah. and and you know we're trying to find an answer, and we can't get any solid answers. Yeah. So we're getting yeah. people sneaking in, throwing this asphalt shit in there, yeah. and then we're looking for answers, and we can't get anybody to give us a solid answer. Yeah. I, I think yeah, that, I feel like the, it's very likely that the if there's if this bulky waste container, the dumpster is being abused, it's by contractors. Yes. Yeah. There's no exactly. question about that. I'm a retired contractor. Uh, contractors are. Are you an abuser? What's that? Are you an abuser? No, I'm not. <laughs> I would never consider taking, you know, and we did a good deal of work in town. We never took anything to the to the uh, state, you know, to the bulky waste container ever. So if somebody's doing work in that house, they need to get rid of sheetrock or tile or whatever. I think that's perfectly acceptable, but somehow you need to limit the contractors. And I have seen, I, I watched a guy pull in with a trailer behind a pickup truck. The pickup truck was filled to water level. The trailer was heaped up. And that was clearly from a major construction project. It was yeah. new materials cut off from two by fours, yeah. shingles, yeah. insulation, all sorts of crap that went in there. Yeah. That just can't happen now how you enforce that or how you determine who's who and what's going on is another issue. I think that the select board is just going to have to come up with some method just and then at the end of the year maybe we'll know whether or not it's working. That's you gotta try something. So just I a big sign that says yeah. no commercial dumping. I, I agree no with you that that's the main issue is I don't want to pay for somebody else's renovation. Yeah I don't want right. to pay for somebody else's I don't want to pay for Deerfield residents contractor waste. I mean that's so uh, I mean, I, again, his, his uh, yeah. contractors will bid a job. They'll bid to, to take oh, this I stuff know. away, and then, and they then dump they'll, it they'll and dump and it here. They'll pocket that money. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So, and their residents mm -hmm. 
and they did the same came from my, my property or the, yeah. now you're not going to get in the transfer station you're lying to me <laughs> get out of here and then i've had I'm not heard that that we've been threatened just be the enforcement so I, i'm like z i do my own renovations and you know where i can i'll break them down into a contractor bag where i can't you know, I, I had to re we did stairs through our basement. I had to take our stringers to Deer or to um, Greenfield. If if I'm healthy enough to work and repair stairs, I'm healthy enough to put it in a truck and go to Green Greenfield, right? Um, but like Nelson said, what's happening is you have contractors that are renovating homes. They're charging the consume the the uh, the resident for disposal, and then disposing in our transfer station for free, so they're pocketing yeah. that money, and we're all paying for it. Right. That's what's happening. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I have to leave. It's just one really important thing that I want to ask, and I, but I have to go, so I, if I can just change the sequence. Uh, any change in hazardous waste? Any yeah. plans for change in the way yeah, hazardous that waste is based on once a month, you know, that sort of thing? But I, I, there's no um, changes that I have plan so that's what we're I mean this this is really the looking at the trash and the bulky waste. I know it's all part of the transfer. And transfer. not other not other services. So, yeah. so that'll no, be no, handled the same way it no is. Other, yeah, it's been yeah, we're, we're only correct. yeah we're only worried about the tonnage on okay. on bulky right. and regular waste. Okay. All right. Thank you. I got Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. 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 So I mean, I can go to the last slide again, which is again just a suggestion. We can go over the budget, show where the budget's increasing. We're missing the. I'm sorry. Well, it, people probably can't see the numbers, but the the budget in FY22 was um, higher, and that's because we had taken out. I I gambled right to lower here. the budget last year, because we had been being paid for recyclables, but technically we could have been charged. So I took out fifteen thousand dollars out of the budget. So that's why. If it had been in FY23, that line would have been $15,000 higher. And this year, it's over $18,000 that's in our budget for what we need to recycle. So. so the spigot is on right now. We're trying to close it a little bit. It's basically what we're trying to do here. And we're trying to shift the focus from to, to reducing, uh, reducing, and, and make, make things more equitable. Everything, every system that government invents has a bias, a value that it, that, that it pushes forward. And you know, we're trying to be more equitable, what we think is fair, have, have the people that are using it the most, paying the most, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and the rest of us that are sporadic users, um, you know, not subsidizing that act that, that those activities, so that, or to the extent possible, so that's, Right, so even if you're like a very infrequent user of the Conway transfer station right now, if you're a taxpayer in Conway, you're still paying <laughs> as much as people who are, you know, abusing the Conway transfer station. And we're trying to... So it's a tough budget year, like I said. <laughs> so earlier I said that I've, I've kind of come around on the pay-to-throw thing, um, and my hang-ups were the plastic bags, which I think we've talked through that. The other things, the other thing that's my hang up is I really miss the way the dump used to be. I, half the furniture in my house came from the dump because it was on the free table. Like, and I have some really nice furniture. I have a, I have a stressless leather chair that someone got a tiny bit of paint on that they left at the dump. And it's in my house, and it has a tiny bit of paint on it, and who cares? Wouldn't this offer an incentive for you not to dispose of something nice like that? Well, so my <laughs> issue is that I miss being able to go to the dump and have that huge free table of stuff. Yeah. I totally agree, but I understood after being elected to select board, I understood with the transfer station attendants how much work that was for them to deal with the, you know, a super nice chair that was left that someone didn't claim that got rained on for three days that then had to go into bulky waste. Even that, like, we wound up paying for it. That's why I'm really psyched about the, like, expansion of the swap shop, you know, like I left a bunch of stuff on the table this weekend. Yeah. Literally, I gave birth to a child in a shirt that I got from the, <laughs> from the swap shop. Like, I'm all about free stuff from the transfer station, yeah. trust me. 
I, mean, I just feel but, like there's a lot of stuff that's being turned away now. Um, like we, like Maggie tried, tried to leave a lamp there or something, and we were told we couldn't because it was an electronic. Oh, yeah, a lamp is not an electronic. <laughs> electronic slash electrical thing. This is not a, related to this. So I was thinking. Well, you, you know what? Distinction needs to be made. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'd love to talk more about the swap shop with people. So if yeah. you want to, you know, email me, and we can we can yeah. chat about it because. There are issues, but I'm just like, dear God, I mean, I, like, half the stuff in my house has come from best. places yeah. like yeah. that. So. We want all the free stuff. Yeah. I think the, the yeah. issue yeah. is that, like, I, yeah. I think a lot of us didn't realize how much the, the, what the, the free stuff is actually costing the town yeah. and, and how much work it is for the transportation of tenants yeah. to deal with it the is, stuff that gets left behind. It's also a safety and traffic flow issue, just yeah. where that is located yeah. and the fact that it was but, like that for 20 years. I know. And, and how many accidents are at the dump in that? Uh, well, actually, yeah, more, more, than, some, more than you uh, think. We'll, we'll, have, think. we'll <laughs> have some parking spaces up like, there soon for the. I don't know. For the um, I've sent very neat pictures of people hitting the rails. Yeah. I mean, so there's no the table there. If the table was there, they would just work. <laughs> well, we're gonna have some parking spaces. I, 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 I've watched. I've watched. I know. I just stopped. Yeah, yeah. 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 Three year old girl. It's like a right of passage. Do you know what? Maybe we could do a whole thing on the swap shop and have a room session on the swap shop. Yeah. You know, how to make that work. My only issue with that free table. My only issue with that free table was people would put chemicals on it. Yeah. That part was was a concern for me. People would leave, you know, pesticides or like. You know, chlorine and or to be clear, things. that was never allowed. It was never allowed, but it, it, these, it was always done. Like, that's yeah. like that's but the I mean, that, but the I mean, but to be is, honest, it's easier to sneak chemicals onto the pre table by the shed than it was by the hopper. Yeah. <laughs> we actually made the problem worse. I just want to point that out. No, there's we don't, that. We don't, we don't we don't do them all. I know. That's, that's, what that's, 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 that's all allowed. If I have chemicals, I can sneak them into the mall. So much easier than I put on the whole thing. But they're supposed to have it. Right. <laughs> because we, we would sit there and watch it. Yeah. And then we're doing our own job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can't the, steal them anymore because we're out to you now. <laughs> <laughs> we know where that first camera's going. I, I, walk, I walked in the mall on Wednesday and I looked at all these bottles of stuff that was half used. You know, lotions and, and toothpaste and, you know, stuff like this is like, you don't know where it came from. You don't know yeah. who's used it. Right. What somebody put things. in it. Yeah. <laughs> so now it becomes a liability for the town of Conway. Yeah. Somebody grabs it, takes it home. Okay. Yeah. I got some nice toothpaste. Next thing, their mouth is full of poison. I got, I got some nice toothpaste. You know how it takes all that. Who would leave it? Who would leave it? Yeah. You know, we we go off, uh, we go off, we go off, we go off. Trying to kill me? We need a coal board at the dump. I found a nice tube of toothpaste. I will I will bring it to you because it's still sitting there. I will go and get it tomorrow. So before we go way off topic, uh, oh, too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, obviously we're seeing some of the same faces here that we saw last time. I would really appreciate everybody having discussions with other town residents about what we're talking about here, offering suggestions. Obviously, we all have email addresses on on our website. Um, Phil got Cantor, right? Just, isn't there like a, <laughs> a, a feedback form at Gmail? I'm sorry, yes, there's, 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 there's a specific email. Um, that's what I like. It always gets to me. Oh, oh yeah, so the easiest way is if you go onto the website and if you scroll down to the bottom, in the middle you'll see a thing that says email us subscribe, slash subscribe. If you click on that, it's a resident feedback form. It's the easiest way, and that comes right to me, and I can forward it to whoever it's to go to. Yeah. And after this last forum, we actually we had a lot of I mean people who we were in the forum feedback. who who yeah. provided feedback about who watched this and then were like, well, so that was great. Like we really want to hear. And I hope that they yeah. see that we took some of your feedback. <laughs> and, the, so. and the presentation will be posted on the website as well, so people, you know, if you couldn't see it tonight, you can actually go and and and, 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 and on and on FCAT YouTube and. Yep. Um, it looks like it, you can read about it in a day or two in, on the, you know, the Green Clipper Court. So. So, so how much time do I have to get my renovation done? One <laughs> <laughs> <What> year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is the next slide is just questions.
I just want to thank you guys for putting so much yeah, work in there. Yeah, you. you know, we're all that's residents, so obviously. Important. We just want to do what's right by the town, so that's why we're here. And one of the things that unites us all is a weird fondness for our transfer station. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm always so proud when I got something from the dump. See, like, I see? love that. I got it. <laughs> There's so, like so much in my house is yeah. from the yeah, conference. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> my very favorite things. Oh, so I don't know if people heard me, but that's one thing that we will um, work with Ron. Uh, there will be some parking spaces up there, so you don't have to just pull on side or block people when you're trying to go to the, um, the mall. Yeah, you, you know where as you're leaving the as you're leaving the transfer station on the left, there's a big pile of wood there. Please yeah. take that if you want it, and we're going to be <laughs> years ago. Maybe. Yeah, got plenty. Thank you. I know. And that was just so old. And we're going to be putting, I think, like three spots in there for specifically for the mall, so that you can just yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay. Great. Everybody good? Good. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Really, really, really appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Sweet.